Hey guys, One Peg here. As always, I want to say thank you very much for lending me your eyeballs and uh, for checking out my Little Things series. I have absolutely loved doing this, and now that I'm finally feeling healthy again, I'm really looking forward to getting out these videos on a much more regular and frequent basis. And as always, if you guys have any tips or tricks or things that you would like included on these Little Things videos that you think would help the community as a whole, please shoot me a message either through Discord or write me a tweet on Twitter and include me in whatever it is that you guys have that, that you know that other people might not. So as time has gone on, I have been increasing the, uh, the amount of stuff that I have here in my notebook. And for today's Little Things video, I thought it would be a good idea to kind of go over a couple of things that have to do with the flea market. So we have some flea market tricks that I want to share with all of you that I think will cut down on the amount of time it takes you to locate items or the items that you would prefer to see. We're also going to discuss a couple of helpful hints that I think would assist all of you in reducing your matching times for finding games in, in Tarkov. A fun little gear modification bug that you guys can try on your own if you so choose that I thought was kind of cool. And the main story today is going to have to do with ergonomics and what you can see from modifying the ergonomics on any of your guns, how it can help and what the heck it does. I may have just killed him around a corner. Hey everybody, my name is OnePeg and this is Little Things Episode 8. One of the most common things that I see newer players in Tarkov struggle with is how do they find the attachments that they're looking for in a short amount of time. And there are a couple of shortcuts for finding the right item that I think would be a very large help for everyone. Now, early on in the game, before you unlock the workbench, you won't have access to be able to modify your weapon through the preset system. Once you get the workbench, then you'll be able to do it that way. But early on in the game, once you get to level 5, you'll have access to the flea market, which ends up unlocking a whole world of possibilities and, and potential for you as someone that would like to maybe modify one of your firearms. So for this example, what I'm going to do is look at modifying this AK-105. If I wanted to see all of the items that connected to an AK-105's base chassis, or the lowers in this case, what I want to do is right-click the AK-105 and select Linked Search. What this does is it brings up all of the potential items that will connect to the lowers of the AK-105. But in this case, let's say that I want a foregrip. If I click on this and say linked search, the foregrip doesn't actually attach to the base portion of the gun. In this case, the attachment point for the foregrip on an AK-105 that's built like this one is, is the B10M and B19 combo. So what we need to do is do a link search off of the handguard instead of off of the AK's base body itself. In this case, we're looking for a foregrip, so we want to go in and look at the different foregrips. In this case, I think I'm going to get myself an RK2. So here we have our RK2. We're just going to drag and drop. If you want to buy multiples of an item, the most common thing that I end up searching for in this case is extra mags. If I wanted to, I can right click and say filter by item. And this brings up all of that exact item that is available to be purchased on the flea market. Now from here, if I wanted ammunition for it or if I needed ammo for it, I could right click and say linked search. And from there, uh, we can look at the different ammo offerings. Here's the rounds and then we can select whichever round it is that we want to use the most. So now we have our 30 round PMAG. So let's say you have a rather valuable item and you want to see whether or not you can get something for that valuable item. This is most commonly done for things like Bitcoin or GP coins, etc. So what you want to do is let's say we're going to use this roller. You want to right click the roller and then say required search. Now what this means is, is that every single item that is listable in the market where someone wants to trade for the roller will be listed here. Right now, this says no offers have been found, but the reason why is because we've got this set to exclude bartering offers. So we want to remove that. In removing it, now we have a list of every item that is available, at least in part, to be purchased for my roller. A very common but annoying bug that we've seen as of late with the flea market is this idea of something being out of stock. Now this is supposed to be reserved just for the NPC traders like Ragman and this ghost balaclava for instance. So if we were to go to the flea market and search for a ghost balaclava, in doing so you can see that this item on the very top for Ragman is marked as out of stock. 
One of the bigger problems that we've been having with the flea market, and it looks like it may just about be remedied, but it still does show up from time to time, is several listings from players that also show out of stock. The problem with this is that it takes up an awful lot of screen space and it's hard to wade through to find it. So the best way to get rid of this is by going to the gear icon and simply changing the quantity from an offering of zero to an offering of one. In doing so, when it refilters the offers, now you no longer will have that out of stock option listed for you at all. Now, sometimes when we go searching for things and we do link searches, we can find some things that end up being pretty hilarious. So take, for instance, this TT pistol. If we do a link search off of the TT pistol, remove our search terms so that we can see everything that connects to it. When we look at the laser target pointers, we have this DLP tactical precision LAM module that is made to go onto the TT pistol itself. However, if we right click this and click link search, one of the things that comes up in this case is the HK quad rail handguard. Now this also works in reverse. So if we were to right click on the handguard and go searching for the laser, it then comes up right here where we can make this purchase. And you can see that even though this is a bug, it still does work kind of funny. Now the next thing that I wanted to talk about was how to reduce your server matching times. Now we've all seen the horror stories that people have talked about where they're stuck in matching for 30, 40 minutes at a clip. And I think that that starts bordering on the ridiculous in terms of how long people are willing to let those timers count for. So first and foremost, let me be the person to tell you don't wait that long. If you hit the seven to eight minute mark and you still haven't loaded into the raid, disconnect and try again. Other than that, if you want to maximize your chances to be able to connect to any of these games without having to wait forever, you want to go into this gear that says change server. Now in here, there's a couple of options. One, the most obvious being use automatic server selection. But in this case, it almost feels like Tarkov regionalizes where they want to place you. So in my opinion, if you're trying to reach a server faster and be able to get in to play this game a little bit more readily, rather than do that, what you want to do is click all of the individual checkboxes, as many as Tarkov will allow you to do, where you can connect to anything and everything under the ping limit of 150. In doing so, and clicking apply, what it will then do is allow you to connect to any and every server that you have on your list. In this case, what I believe it does is expand upon your base server selection that the game is automatically trying to place you into, and instead expanding upon that to more than just the region that you're located in. So now, yes, you may end up playing in the EU with a ping of 110, but you're not going to be waiting for 25 minutes before you're able to get a game. And that, to me, is the important thing. So lastly, what I'd like to discuss with all of you is ergonomics. And for the purpose of this, we're going to highlight the difference that ergonomics makes on weapons between these three different M4s. Obviously, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to go into a raid with a gun built kind of like this one. But for the purpose of illustrating this, I want to show you the difference between a gun that has 32 ergonomics a gun that has 58 ergonomics, and a gun that has 100. Now for this test, what I'm going to do is wear some very, very heavy armor. And the reason why is because depending on the type of armor that you end up using, there can be an ergonomics penalty. So for the purpose of illustrating all of this and showing you the major differences between these three, by wearing heavier armor that has a larger ergonomics penalty, like the 6B43, which has a negative 27%, and the Alton, which has a negative 6% for the helmet, and another 7% for the face shield, this will cause the overall ergo of the gun to be negatively affected. So for things like stamina drain, for instance, it will be a little bit more exacerbated, and you can see the differences over time a little bit more readily. So when it comes to Tarkov and ergonomics, you need to remember the three S's. No, not those three S's. This is speed, sound, and stamina. ADSing with our first M4 of 32 ergonomics shows that there is some pretty considerable stamina drain while holding an ADS. Second, our ergonomics rating of 58 has a bit slower of a stamina drain, but still something that is noticeable. This would be what I would consider to be in the usable range, something that won't decay too fast, but still decays. 
And lastly, our Ergo rating of 100, even wearing a 6B43 and an Alton, which has pretty significant Ergo penalties, over a two-minute period of time, there was absolutely no stamina drain whatsoever. This means that throughout the entire map, you could hold an ADS and never lose any stamina. In fact, at this level of ergonomics, you could actually gain stamina while holding your ADS, especially if you're prone, which has a little bit of an ergo buff in terms of stamina. The second S on our list is sound, specifically related to how loud is your weapon. Now our first M4 rated at 32 ergo, when we right click to ADS, you can quite clearly hear a very audible rattle coming from the gun itself as you raise it to your shoulder. Our second gun at 58 ergonomics still has a pretty audible sound, but as we raise it to our shoulder, you can hear that the sound associated with it is much lower than that of our 32 ergo gun. And lastly, we have our 100 Ergo M4. When we ADS this, it is significantly reduced, and you can barely hear an audible sound coming off of this at all. Now, why is this important? Well, when it comes to Tarkov, obviously sound is all proximity-based. So the louder the rattle is of your gun, the more likely your enemies are to hear you. That includes both players and AI. So it is a good idea to at least have some kind of decent ergonomics rating on your gun if you're trying to maintain a rather low profile. Now lastly, for Ergo, we have speed. Obviously coming in last, we have our 32 Ergo M4 where as we raise it to our shoulder, you can see as compared side by side, it is the slowest of all of them. Secondarily, we have our mid-level 58 Ergo M4. While not awful, when we raise it to our shoulder, you can see quite clearly that it does take, while less time than the first M4, does take a little bit longer than the 100 Ergo option, where it is lightning fast. It's lightning fast. So in this case, having an M4 with a rating of 100 ergonomics is pretty significantly advantageous. It's quieter, it's faster, and it has significantly less stamina decay. All this really comes down to now is recoil control, which is something we'll get into in another video. But for the purpose of this, the idea here is that you want to incorporate some ergonomics into a build. And in most cases, my personal opinion is that something like a shift grip, which is seen in our 100 Ergo M4, is more important overall than using something to reduce recoil like an RK2 grip, which we see in our first M4. So guys, that's what I have for you today. I just want to say thank you again for stopping by and checking out my Little Things series. Please uh, include some tips if you have any for me. Uh, I'd love to see what you guys have to offer for, uh, for some of these videos. I would love to include some of your submissions in them. And uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, both in the next video and on stream tomorrow morning. Thanks so much. Bye.